um, in another way. In this lecture, we're going to briefly discuss the total binding energy as well as the rest mass energy of an atom. So basically, we're going to discuss the relationship between a stationary mass as well as its energy. So in the same way that molecules are more stable and lower in energy systems than the constituent atoms that make up that molecule, atoms themselves are more stable systems and systems that are lower in energy as compared to the energies of the constituent nucleons and electrons that make up that atom. So basically in the same way that molecules form and that releases energy, when atoms form, that releases energy as well. So the formation of the atom from its constituent elements releases energy and the energy that is released is defined as the total binding energy. Now if we form an atom and that releases energy to break an atom means we must actually input a certain quantity of energy. So the total binding energy energy can also be defined as the energy that is required to separate the protons, neutrons, and electrons from one another, thereby disassembling and breaking our atom apart. Now, we can also define something known as the total binding energy per nucleon. This is simply the total binding energy, the energy that is needed to break apart our atom, divided by the number of protons and neutrons in our nucleus. So let's look at the following example in which our goal is to compare the mass of the carbon atom as described by the periodic table and the mass of the individual constituent protons, uh, neutrons, and electrons. Now, if we examine the periodic table, we see that our carbon atom, a single carbon atom, has a mass of 12.0107 unified atomic mass units. So this is the mass of our atom when it is actually formed. Now, what exactly is the mass of all the individual constituents of our carbon atom. So in a neutral carbon atom, we have six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. The mass in unified atomic mass units of a proton is this, the mass of a neutron is this, the mass of an electron is this. So six multiplied by this gives us the total mass of our protons, this is the total mass of the neutrons, and this is the total mass of our electrons. If we sum up these quantities, this will give uh, the total mass of all these constituent elements. Now, notice that there is a discrepancy between the mass of our carbon as shown by the periodic table and the mass of all these constituent elements of the protons, neutrons, and electrons. In fact, if we take this and subtract, we see that there is a decrease in the total mass of our atom. So basically, there is a difference in mass of 0.08823748 unified atomic mass units. So this atom of carbon basically has a smaller mass than the mass of all these constituents. And the question is, where exactly did this mass actually go? So when protons, neutrons, and electrons combine to form an atom, there's usually a decrease in mass. The question is, where exactly did this mass go. And this leads directly to this idea of the rest mass energy. So basically Albert Einstein was able to show that mass is simply another form of energy in the same way that we have potential energy, gravitational potential energy, electric potential energy, kinetic potential energy. We have mass energy. So whenever we have a stationary mass, a stationary object with a certain mass, it has a certain quantity of energy that is given by 
by this equation. So E equals mc squared, where C is the speed of light in a vacuum, and m is the mass of our object in kilograms. So basically, if we take this value and we convert it into kilograms, and then we multiply it by the square of the speed of light, that will give us the amount of energy that was released, that is the total binding energy when the six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons combine to form our atom. Remember, the formation of an atom is stabilizing, and that means it releases energy. And this is the amount of energy that was released when our carbon vo uh, was formed. So basically, we can take this and we can convert it into electron volt, and we see that this is equal to 82.44 mega electron volts. So, if we want to calculate the total binding energy per nucleon, we basically take this and divide it by the total number of nucleons. So, 6 plus 6, we take this and divide that by 12. And that gives us the total binding energy per nucleon. Now, notice this also gives us the energy that is needed to input into our carbon atom to actually separate the 6 protons, 6 neutrons and six electrons from one another. <coughs> <coughs> ah! 